If you could have a guide, someone to help you tell your story, give you the tools to reach your ideal customer, lead you to living your dreams and turning a profit, would you follow it? Everyone, every passion has a place in this world, and each has the potential to be unstoppable. It's time to buckle up and tune in to your personal strategist, life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Start. Hello, 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 and happy Wednesday from the studio here in Atlanta, GA. This is Lindy Chafin Start coming to you live on Inspired Choices Network. Um, it is a beautiful Wednesday here in Atlanta, and as I always like to update you on the weather, <laughs> Clear blue skies and nice warm outside. Gives a girl a lot of things to think about, talk about. Um, and today, especially, we're going to be talking about those things that I've been eking into your brains for the last, oh, I don't know, few months. And it's a pretty special thing. It's called an audience profile. Um, we're going to talk about audience profiles through the eyes of your friends. You'll understand that play on words when I say, let's talk about Monica. We're going to back into her profile and show you how to determine the way your audience targets think, feel, shop, perceive your message, all by looking at this memorable television character. Maybe a couple of them. Depends on how much time we have. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm glad that you are here. And I want to say that I want to dive right in, but I don't know that I'm quite ready to do that yet. I'll share a few things first. Um, just on audience profile tip, um, I have a new friend. My new friend's name is Max. And uh, Max is a nice guy, definitely a gentleman. Uh, has been single for a minute or two. Has older kids. Um, he's very vibrant. He's very successful, uh, a bit lively, a lot of a jokester, uh, likes good food, loves good conversation. There's a lot uh, to this person, right? So I was actually just kind of sitting earlier um, thinking about things. Now, don't kill me, Max, if you're listening. Um, I'm going to divulge your age real quick. Uh, Max is 51, and uh, so that kind of positioned me to think about some things earlier. I was kind of chilling out for lunch watching television, and I thought about this dating app. It's called... Our time, a commercial for our time came on. Now I'm 47. I'm not shy of 50, um, barely shy of 50 anyway. And um, I saw this commercial come on, and there's this lovely gray-headed woman um, sharing like dating sites. What? I wouldn't even know where to begin. All right. If any of you are listening and you're anywhere in the general 47 to 51 age bracket. Tell me something. Have you ever used a flipping computer? Have you used your smartphone in the past 10 years? I'm just curious. So that's one of my pet peeves about, <laughs> about companies who engage marketers who don't know their damn demographic. It makes me nuts. Keisha's laughing. Keisha, producer Keisha. I can hear her right now. I don't even have to look at my screen. I can hear her. Let me tell you. Tell me what millennial just wrote that copy for you. They think their mother's ancient and they want to get her a date. So they're going to try to breathe some life into us old folk. 
and tell us that we need to pick up a phone and download an app. What? Why don't you take that a little step further? <laughs> we know how to do this. We're not stupid. We're not 90 and aged, and even if we were, we'd still probably be using the damn computer. Y'all need to wake up. Seriously. Can you hear the... I mean, there's some serious vinegar in my voice right now because that kind of stuff goes all over me. Will I ever use the Hour Time app? Hell no. Will Max? Nah, probably not. I might be surprised, but I doubt it. That's going to make him feel like old and useless. It makes me feel old and useless. Why would you talk to me like that? Who the fuck do you think you are? So, there you go. <laughs> That's where I am today. But there's another one. Another thing that drives me crazy. And this is the whole 55 plus community concept. Have you guys seen this? I applaud 55 plus communities. I think they're brilliant. Um, but don't talk to me like I'm ready to move into an old folks home, like I've got nothing but retirement on the brain, do you know your demographic? If you're telling me I'm going to play golf every day and you've got all of these social activities planned because I've got nothing else to do, you have another thing coming. Your audience ranges in age for a 55 plus community starting at 55, working your way on up to active adults who are, Lord knows, well into their 80s and 90s. What do you think? People die these days at young ages? No. Healthcare has improved considerably. People live longer lives. We take better care of ourselves. We got the message. We watch the TV at 3 a.m. We know we're supposed to eat less fat just because there's an air fryer commercial on. Come on, people. Learn how to talk to your audience, and you have multiple audience targets. So don't think that 55 plus is 55 to 95. It's 55 to 60, or 55 to 62 even. I'll push it just to make you happy. 62 to 70. 70 to, I'm not even going to go past 75 at this point, but you can see what I'm saying. Generationally, they might be in the same similar bracket, but think about their parents, who their parents were. How did their parents influence them? Think about what was going on in the world when those kids were teenagers through their 30s. What kind of wars were we fighting? What was going on? What were the values of the time? All of these things influence them in addition to their circumstances, their life. And those are things you have to think through. If you're talking to me in, gen in generalities, I'm not going to hear your message. I'm going to block it out. All right. So thank you, Max, for letting me make you an example. That was fun. I could make it even more fun, but I'm not going to do that. Except um, you just sent me a picture of yourself. Uh, I'm not even going to talk to you about that right now. So, all right, so we're going to talk about audience profiles today. Um, and you see why, right? Does all of this make sense? I am just shy of 50, three years shy of 50, and I don't plan on retiring. I'm having way too much fun doing what I do. And I use a computer every day and a smartphone every day and apps you've probably never never heard of, and technology you've probably never heard of every day. <laughs> and you're trying to tell me, oh, yeah, our activities coordinators are renowned. Well, I'm happy for her. I want her job. Okay, so audience profile. <laughs> so no, soapbox. I'll step down. I digress. Okay. Um, let's talk about what we're going to talk about in these audience profile pieces. Um, I've developed this fabulous worksheet. 
it's very easy. It kind of helps you walk through the whole audience target, kind of makes you think around uh, what the person that you're going to be talking to. It's like creating a profile for your best friend who's going to be sitting across the table from you and you want to pitch them your new Amway product. How are you going to do that? Well, you know your best friend really well, but do you know how to talk to them about your Amway product? Probably not. So we're going to look at the simple things like demographic information. We're going to look at the way they think, what kind of job they might have, how much money they might make. Um, I mean, you have to think about the differences between somebody that has some college education, a bachelor's, a master's, a Ph.D., uh, I promise you the person with a bachelor's is likely making more money than the guy with a Ph.D. Um, so how are, you know, what are their spending habits going to be like in that case? Uh, where do they get their information from? What books do they read? Magazines, blogs, websites do they look at? Podcasts do they listen to? A 47-year-old just said podcast? What? <laughs> what conferences do they attend? Who are their gurus? I got good gurus, really good ones. I love Tony Robbins. He makes me happy. He's got so much dang energy. I would give anything to just stand in the same room with him and have bounce back and forth with a BS conversation just for a whole afternoon. He would be so much fun. Um, Melissa Gilbert's another good one. Gabby Bernstein's another good one. There are lots of them out there, but these are some of my favorites. Um, so we're going to look at that kind of fun thing. And then we're going to break it down into, okay, well, what are the values that belong to this person? What goals do they have? What challenges do they face? Where are their pain points? Do we know what a pain point is? All right, let me share that a little bit. Um, a pain point is an emotion, basically. Um your audience's pain points are going to vary from person to person to person. But these are those little twitchy, tweaky feelings we get when something plucks at a heartstring. It touches us, whether it touches us negatively or it touches us positively. It's still plucking, right? So before you start thinking this is like smarmy and you feel gross about your marketing, you kind of have to stop thinking in that direction. This is one of those truly important pieces to developing a high quality marketing strategy. You have to know your audience. You have to know the people who are walking in to buy the coffee, the empanadas, come to your gym, buy the handmade leather goods made by refugees. You have to know what you're talking to. Who are you talking to? What is driving them to make their decisions? That's kind of where the pain points come in. And all of the information that you gather from their demographics, you granted, I realize you aren't sitting there. I mean, you're making your best assumptions when you initially do this. But that's why I say it's one of those exercises that you're not going to do alone. And if you think you're going to do it alone, don't. Pick up the phone and call me and I'll do it with you. You have to get out of your own way to make this great. And once you think you've got it tuned... Then you go start plucking people, customers, existing customers, best friends, random people on Facebook, running Facebook polls. It's when you start picking the brains of the people that you really want to be your audience and developing some interest along the way. All right. So here we are into our conversation about character profiles, audience profiles, um, through the eyes of your friends. We're going to continue our conversation in just a few minutes. You are listening to Lindy Chafin Start on Unstoppable. We'll be right back. 
We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, hosted by life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Start, you'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur, or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to Unstoppable. This is your host, Lindy Chafin Start, and today we are talking about audience profiles through the eyes of your friends or friends. Um, before we went to break, we just kind of breezed through what a customer portrait worksheet looks like. Um, it's basic demographic information, um, information that might influence someone's thinking, things along that line. Um, but before we get into friends, I kind of want to back you into something really easy, um, just so you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like, right? Uh, this is a, a really easy back end because everybody has seen this commercial for um, Keytruda, Altria, one of those antidepressant drugs. Um, you see this lovely woman in the commercial. She is Lauren and she suffers from bipolar depression. Pretty simple, that's how it starts out. Picture of Lauren, Lauren suffers from bipolar depression. It walks you through her life in sort of a snapshot, right? She's um, in her studio covering up a canvas that she's been working on. She's putting paint brushes away. She's uh, not noticing that her sweet little daughter's walking in the room with her sketchbook and pencils wanting to sit down and work with her mom. She's at the doctor's office with her husband. They're talking about this drug. The doctor's giving her the reasons why it would be good for her to take this drug. And then, what? Flip the switch. What does Lauren get back? Lauren takes the drug. Lauren uncovers the canvas, pulls out the paintbrushes, plays with her daughter, works on an art project with her daughter, goes back to teaching art classes, helps other art students to feel good about what they're creating. It lifts her up, feels good. There's no questioning what's going to happen next. The manic phases are leveled out, right? She gets her life back. So if I were going to fill out my customer portrait worksheet based on what I know, and this is just, I'm backing into it so you can kind of get an idea of how a customer portrait worksheet can play into your messaging, okay? So here's what it looks like. My product is an antidepressant. For in this case, it's an antidepressant specifically for uh, bipolar depression. Our audience target's name is Lauren. She's 41. She's a female. She, I'm just going to say she lives in Atlanta. I have no idea where she is. She's married, obviously, because there's a husband looming around in the background in the commercial. Um, she has one daughter who's 11. Pretty simple demographic information, right? We've given our audience target a name and a location, a gender, and just some basics. 
married, has a daughter. All right. So let's think about Lauren for just a second. What does Lauren, where does she get her information? What kind of information is Lauren looking for based on what you just saw? Okay. Well, we know she's probably going to be pretty well versed on bipolar depression. So she's likely read a book called A Mind of Your Own. A Mind of Your Own talks about ways in which you can overcome depression or maximize your life around this disease that you're dealing with. She probably also um, read a book called Bounce Back Parenting, which is raising a child when you have this condition. How can you, how do you do that? So these are questions that she's asking. These are places she's getting information. What would her magazines look like? Well, if I were going to guess as an artist, she would read something like Muse for nothing else than to flip through the pages to find inspiration and joy because art is what she loves. Blogs, websites, thisiscolossal.com. Unique art from all over the planet. Podcasts she might listen to. She needs inspiration, so she's probably listening to Magic Lessons. I believe that's Melissa Gilbert. And all songs considered because music is one of those things that she has to have. She holds on to it. She has to hear it. It's a thing that drives her. It helps her create. It also helps bring her, ground her in her space. Calms her, soothes her. All songs considered. She might not necessarily go to a conference. She's an art teacher. She might. She might not. I left that one blank for Lauren. But her gurus would be people like Melissa Gilbert or Gabby Bernstein. Okay. So that's where she gets her information from. Now, based on that, what do you think her favorite quote might be? Who do you think? Where do you think her thoughts come from? Who do you think she might draw inspiration from outside of her gurus even? Well, here's what I thought. This is the quote. It's not the strongest species that survive, not the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. She's dealing with this thing she has no control over. She wants to be as normal as she can be. It's not the strongest species that survive. Not the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. Is she willing to change? Absolutely. Because she has fears. And fears drive you to make changes. It was Charles Darwin who said that, by the way. <laughs> so we know occupation. She, she's, she's an artist. Her job title is art teacher. She probably makes only out to 35 grand a year. She's got college, some college, maybe a bachelor's, could be a master. You never know. Um, but I'm going to assume that she's got some college. So what's going to, you know, there again, what are some things that you might think around? If she's making 35, she is married, so it's a two-income household. They have a kid, so they have expenses. She's got this medication that she's having to deal with. So, you know. Is pain money going to be a challenge, pain point, objection? So let's look at that next. All right, so Lauren, now that we know her basic information and some things that might drive her to make certain decisions, let's look at what her values are. Well, I bet you she values family. This is based on a 30-second commercial. I'm backing you into an audience profile. Okay. Her values look like family, peace of mind, and creativity. 
right? Those are things she holds dear to her heart. Okay, her goals. What are her goals going to be? Well, I can tell you at the top of that list is going to be managing her depression because she knows something's wrong. She's got to get this figured out and fix it. And she's got to fix it fast because she wants to be a great mom. And she wants to keep doing what she loves. Is she going to think about her quote? The ones most responsive to change? You bet. Her challenges. These are always tough. Her challenges are going to be knowing when it's just normal or knowing when it's the bipolar. That's a huge place of uncertainty for Lauren. If any of you are imagining me sitting here telling you this right now, I'm talking with my hands. Her fear is of not knowing what is driving this in me. I don't need another instant pot. There are six that were just delivered yesterday. They're all exactly the same. What am I doing? Is this normal or is this my condition? Does that make sense? So her challenges are just wondering whether it's real or whether it's not. And she's going to question. If it's real, I promise she's questioning. Did I just do that because that was me acting on my own? Or did I just do that because my brain's haywire and it's doing what I don't want it to do? And vice versa. Like, that's a huge challenge. Okay. So we know what her values, her goals are, her challenges are. So what are her pain points going to be? What are her emotions going to be that drive her to make decisions? Well, she has a little girl. So I promise you at the top of that list of being, you know, managing depression, being a mom and doing the things that she loves, fear of alienating her daughter and her husband are going to be right there. I mean, seriously, that's the last thing you want to do is chase your family away, especially when you're so vulnerable, right? You need them, and they're your touchstones, and you can't lose that. Another pain point, never being a productive part of society. She can't contribute. She can't continue to be an art teacher. She cannot share her love of creation and art if she can't know what's real and what's not. FOMO, big problem here, fear of missing out. She's terrified she's going to miss out on life because she's going to be holed up in the house. Not going out to do the things that she needs to do, loves to do. Not being able to tell the difference between if it's real, if it's not. Wanting for some reason to have one more of. I know I just bought a car last year. I need another car. And then never being happy. Those are pain points. That hurts. Thinking that you would never be happy hurts. But there's one last piece of this puzzle, and that's her objections. Like I said, it's a two-income household, but she only makes $35,000 a year, and she can't do that if she's not teaching, and she can't teach if she's not able to do that in her brain because her brain's telling her you need to be doing this and not that. So what are her objections going to be cost? Surely, she's got that daughter, so she's going to be thinking about side effects. All right, chew on it. <laughs> it's time for another break. Uh, you're listening to Unstoppable on Inspired Choices Network. And when we come back from the break, we'll be talking more about customer portraits profiles. I'll look forward to it. Stay tuned.
We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, hosted by life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Start, you'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur, or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. And welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Unstoppable on the Inspired Choices Network. This is your host, Lindy Chafin-Start. And today, we are talking about creating these very valuable um, customer portraits, profiles, audience profiles, character profiles, whatever you want to call them. Depends on if you're writing a novel or if you're... Um, you know, working on your marketing strategy. But before we get back into our conversation, I will say my offer stands. If you are interested in having a quick half hour conversation on stuff, it's on me. If you need full on consulting, give me a call. We'll work out a date and time to get together. Uh, it's part of my offering here at the studio. Happy to be part of your strategy or help you work out any details that you might need just a little bit of assistance with. So now back to our fun show. So we were talking about Lauren, and we've walked through her customer portrait worksheet. And I just kind of want to toss this out there so you can kind of bring it all full circle. So you see Lauren in the commercial. Um, you have seen her in her depression, unhappy, not able to be completely there, completely functional, putting away the things that she loves, ignoring her family. Um, you realize that she in her heart wants to make a change so they go to the doctor she and her husband go to the doctor together um, they hear from the doctor what how her life can be better how this can make things work um, uh, Max you bugger quit texting me um, how to make things work you know as this is going to be part of her new lifestyle. She can get back to the things that she loves. You see her, you know, back in her life. So this is Lauren. You've worked through. Now, we talked about those objections, cost, and side effects. Why do you think the drug company at the very end of the commercial runs through the list of side effects? Hey, we're just giving you a heads up. This could happen, but this is going to be your benefit. That's why they do it. And it's also why, yeah. Give us a call, reach out to this number, um, talk to your doctor about free samples. We want you to try it. We want you to see the benefit. It's like a try before you buy, you know, 30-day money-back guarantee. There's always something. There's a spin on it. Always there's a spin on it. But it gives you the opportunity to try it without making a commitment. To see how it works. Now I realize in the grand, and I'm no doctor, but I'll throw this out there, um, and I'm not liable. But in the grand scheme of antidepressants, you don't take them for 30 days and say, huh, yeah, huh, no, 
you have to kind of commit to these for a minute and you wean on and wean off or wean off and slowly, gradually gain momentum with them, however you want to say that. Um, obviously, I'm not in copywriting mode at the moment. <laughs> so, um, there you go. That is Lauren's story. So now that we've we've gone through Lauren's story, I want to talk about Monica and Ross and Rachel and Joey and Chandler. I get everybody. Um, but also, I will share this as well because Keisha's tapping me on the shoulder. Um, if you want to do a full-on class for this, uh, the, my first teaching of this class will be April 11th um, with Jay's Let's see, Jay's Culinary Incubator here in Atlanta, Jay's Kitchen Culinary Incubator. That's our space. Um, I will be there. The class is open to the public. I believe it's $75 per person. So check out Jay's Kitchen Culinary Incubator uh, for her upcoming classes. Uh, there's also information on my website about the classes. We'd love to have you. So if you're in Atlanta, come join the fun. All right. Now, moving on to Monica, I want to read y'all some stuff because this just cracked me up. There are so many different opinions about our friends. I mean, these were my friends. I'm sure like they were your friends. <laughs> I tuned in every Thursday before ER to watch Friends. Every Thursday. It was a phenomenon. My sister-in-law and actually, the two of us, we would get on the phone. She lived in Vitalia. I lived in Macon, and we would get on the phone, and we would watch Friends together, and then we would watch ER together. It was so much fun. But it was like, here were these characters that were so lively, and we were, I guess, in some odd way, living vicariously through them. They were broken. They were beaten. They were divorced, dating, married, kids, no kids, didn't know what they wanted to do with their lives, did, but couldn't quite get there didn't care because they were hippie. I mean, you know, there was all of these different people who came together in a coffee shop or in Monica's living room to hang. And they were okay with each other. They were comfortable. And I think that made us more comfortable. I kind of miss them. I don't kind of miss them. I really do miss them. Um, even though Max says he is not a fan of Jennifer Aniston. Jen, I'm on your side, man. I am. I love you been aspiring to have your hair as many of us have for years but I do love you as an actress as well all of uh, all of you are pretty particularly brilliant so but I want to share with you I was like reading through what bloggers and people were saying about like these characters and I read anything there was one um, cute little she was so cute millennial blogger that probably was two when the show was on the air um, and she was talking about how <laughs> old they are like honey life was a lot different back then um people you know they they probably did come across to you like this listening to them now because your generation god love you all um you're just very different than the way we were and i'm not even a, a we the way they well i guess i am a we um anyway it was just fun to read but there's some good ones so here's let me just do monica real quick um, one person said, some might say Monica is a little obsessive but compulsive, but she really just likes things in order, which actually makes her more of a control freak. She was more of a control freak about, well, she was OCD about her space and her life. She was a control freak about everybody else's lives. Let's just make sure we get that really, really clear. Um she was larger than average as a teenager and managed to lose all that weight as a young adult and became a chef. Why do you think that was? She's Jewish. She has an older brother who is as good at taking care of her as she is at taking care of him. They look out for each other. It's really kind of cute. It's almost like a twin relationship, than it, more so than it is a older brother, younger sister scenario. They're really cute together. But one of the things you know early on is that, you know, Monica wants to have a solid relationship. 
not really a date around kind of girl. She wants to be a mom. She wants to be settled. She wants to have a family. So here's one little snippet about Monica. And this other one got a little detailed. And I read this. Let's just share this little bit with you. It's cute. Um, <laughs> this is where we're we're um, writing about friends as my, you know, the Myers Briggs. We're talking in terms of. Um, personality profiles and she is apparently an ESTJ. <laughs> she draws her energy from others. She has a constant desire to control and manage her friends' actions. Now remember when Ross went to China last minute and Rachel found out and he gave her the brooch for her birthday through the friends and she realized when Chandler said, well, when Ross fell in love with Carol, remember he got her that stupid, ridiculous, expensive crystal duck. And it wasn't the crystal duck that stuck. And it wasn't the expensive that stuck. It was the fact that Ross had fallen in love with Carol. What, what happened with Rachel? She realized right then what Chandler just said, Ross loves me. So what does Monica do? Rachel. What are you going to do? Are you going to do this or are you not going to do this? What? You're cheating on my brother? She's working through every scenario in her head. Monica's seriously trying to control the situation, working through every scenario in her head of whether Rachel wants to be in a committed relationship, whether she's going to go to the airport and get Ross, uh, go to the airport to get go pick him up. No, don't do a date. She gets in her head. She's that controlling. It's really funny. Details are everything. For Monica, there's no doubt. Um, she is definitely the one who's going to run the Geller family Thanksgiving, and she's going to be the most competitive at the football game. Geller family football, she's in there. She's going to kick some butt. She's a head chef. Most head chefs are like this. They're very, very detail-oriented. They're very task-oriented. They're very good at breaking a project down. You have to be when you're in a kitchen. You have to know what components make up what, how, what the timing of each component is, how to put the components together so that the, you know, the dish can go out to the customer and make them perfectly happy. So she thrives on order. She thrives on schedules. She's OCD. Did you ever see that apartment in disarray when Monica was around? Absolutely not. Nope. Absolutely not. So that's kind of Monica just from the outside looking in, right? That's pretty simple. So let's look at Monica's customer portrait. Are you kidding? We're already out of time, Keisha. You are kidding me. Um, so let's look at Monica's demographics really quickly before we go to break. What Monica's demographics look like she's 30. She's a girl. She lives in New York City. She's single currently. We're going, you know, we're going back to that when Ross and Rachel finally realized, realized things. So it's a minute ago. Um, and she has no kids. All right. So where does she get her information? What kind of gurus does she have? My guess is she too would love Tony Robbins. She loves anything that's inspirational. So she would probably have read, had it been written then, um, Awaken the Giant Within. Uh, she also would have Mastering the Art of French Cooking on her bookshelf. Her magazines would be things like Bon Appetit, um, Healthy Living, what else? Cooking Light, there's some. Um, blogs and websites, if they would have been a little bit more around <laughs> at the time, which they weren't, now they would be, would be um, inspirational. She would love a good inspirational website, and she would love anything related to food. She would attend probably the American Culinary Federation National Conference, and again, her guru would be, her main guru would be Tony Robbins. All right. We're going to go one last break. You're listening to Unstoppable here on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, 
hosted by life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Start. You'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur, or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. And welcome back to Unstoppable. This is Lindy Chafin Start, and we are talking about customer portraits profiles audience profiles. Um, and we're looking at Monica and Monica is all we're going to have time for today. And that just breaks my heart because I was ready to do everybody else. Okay. So let's finish this strong folks. What do we know about Monica? We're going to have a little fun with this. So we know that she is a chef at this particular point in time. I don't remember if she was actually an acting chef somewhere, but we're going to go ahead and say she was head chef. And she's head chef at a restaurant in New York, so she's at the time probably making on the outs of 85000 a year. I'm going to guess. She doesn't live like it, but she was. She definitely has college. We know what her education level is. So what's her quote going to be? I had fun with this one. Um, and it was it's Tony Robbins' quote. It's one of my favorites. There's a powerful driving force inside every human being that once unleashed can make any vision, dream, or desire a reality. Now, why do you think a quote like that would speak to somebody like Monica? Oh, the wheels are spinning. I can hear them all over the planet. There's a powerful driving force inside every human being that once unleashed can make any vision, dream, or desire a reality. Now, Monica knows this firsthand because she was a not-so-petite teenager, and now she's this tiny little thing living in New York. She's not in the burbs anymore. She's living in the city with her friends. Yep. She is definitely the control freak. She's OCD, so she sets a goal and she goes after it. Remember how obsessive she was about finding the right relationship with the right person so she could have, you know, the picture-perfect American family, two-and-a-half kids, a dog, It was funny that she ended up with Chandler because he was so broken. Remember, his mom and dad were very unique parental guides for him. And it was odd that he came out as an analytical sort, right? His dad was a drag queen and his mom was a neurotic novelist. Do y'all remember this? And here he came out managing the weenus. <laughs> no, I didn't watch Friends a lot. So let's talk about Monica's values. What do those look like? Well, of course, her friends, hello. Her family. Remember we talked about Ross and Monica? How close they were, despite being him older and her younger. They were very, very close to the point that they hung out together. How many older brothers and younger sisters do you know that do that? And order. Order. Not controlled chaos. Order. Everything has a place. Everything in its place. Order. If it's not in its place, put it away. Or give it to me and I'll put it where it goes because you won't know where it goes. That was Monica. 
Okay, so what are her goals? Well, again, we're going to go back to she wants to get married. She wants to become a mom. She wants to have that loving relationship that was modeled by her parents. Her parents were still together. They never got divorced during the whole 10 years of the show. Nobody ever talked about divorce. They were great role models. They were great parents. They supported both of them. They even videotaped the painful points in Ross's life. God love him. Another goal, she wanted to have really neat kids. She wanted OCD kids. Because <laughs> <she laughs> chaos would drive her crazy. Any kid's playroom would drive her crazy. So I bet, I bet if Monica in real life would have become a parent, she would be a Montessori parent. She would have to shuffle the shelves. She would have to change them out every few weeks so the kids could only have five exercises at the time to focus on. It wouldn't be because of their education. It would be because <laughs> she wanted those shelves to be neat. She wanted that work put up when they were done with it. And she wanted to be a, a well-recognized, if not world-renowned chef. That was what Monica wanted. Those were her goals. What were her challenges? Oh, well, up front and center and probably the only one she ever really had because she was adorable was letting go. I originally wrote letting go of the reins, and that's true. But I think Monica would have struggled with letting go, period. She wasn't, she had a very hard time relinquishing control or her idea of control with her friends and her family. And she was certainly never going to let herself be out of control. Because what would happen then? Would she get fat? Now this is speaking to her pain points. If she lost control, what would happen? Would she get kicked out of her apartment? her rent control department in New York that she pays nothing for. Did you notice it was purple? <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. Um, she would be fearful of losing her friends if she got angry. She would be fearful that they did not come over and hang out on a Saturday afternoon if the apartment was a mess. She was challenged with letting go. She was afraid of losing control. She was afraid of upsetting friends and family. She had that fear of gaining all of her weight back. She had a fear of never becoming a mom or getting married, finding the right relationship. But what were her objections? What would her main objection be? Pregnant pause. If your product didn't fit nicely into her OCD life, that would be her biggest objection. You're not going to fit that square peg in this round hole. It's not going to happen. So that's going to be her biggest objection. How do you speak to that? Well, I guess we'll just have to come up with another show. <laughs> on how to speak to Monica as a customer. If you have any suggestions on what you would like to see us try to sell to Monica, feel free to reach out at unstoppablestart.com. Until then, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for being here and listening to audience profiles through the eyes of your friends. Until next week, be unstoppable. Thank you for being Inspired Choices Network's most valuable asset and for tuning in to Unstoppable. Host Lindy Chafin Start will return next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time with more valuable tips to support you and your small business. Until then, be unstoppable. <laughs>